Hello everybody, welcome to Wanborough Station. Now a very quick video today on the Zoom Fly 5. So in my quickie style videos, I'll do a good bad. So a good point, if you, especially if you don't like watching my videos very long, and also you enjoyed a brick light shoe like the Zoom Fly 3, and also a very heavy one, well these are even better for you because they feel like a total brick. They're even heavier than the Zoom Fly 3, despite the fact they got Zoom X rather than React. In my size, they come out at 388 grams on the left shoe and 381 on the right. That compared to about 362 in the Zoom Fly 3, which I thought was possibly the worst shoe I've bought in the last four or five years and pick them up and thought I mean they actually feel lighter than these ones a good point I just got for a session Matt suggested today to do five by three minutes one minute rest straight into five by two minutes one minute rest so I went around all the lanes and paths and around here a bit up and down a bit of off-road a bit on road and it wasn't too bad actually I mean you could feel the weight and these really are a training shoe <laughs> certainly won't be racing in these ones but yeah at least I got through the session I wasn't really looking at the splits in this one but they're sort of okay pace one of those sessions where you just need to work hard and in that sense they did okay so perhaps another good point is that the color is quite nice they match my new style for fluorescent yellow tops i could be seen when i go running at dusk which i normally seem to bad point if you're looking for a shoe to compare with the new sakoni speed 3 well these are 100 grams heavier and whilst those are probably the sort of shoe you could take for races obviously you can race in anything but i mean not going to volunteer to wear a shoe like the zoom fly 5 which is just so heavy on the plus side i think well actually when i got going although they did feel like a brick there was quite a lot of cushioning underfoot there it didn't really feel like the zoom x at all but it actually felt more like the react in the react of the zoom fly 3 as i remembered it and more like the pegasus 39 than the zoom x in say the alpha fly or the vapor fly next percent so in that sense if you think you're going to get a cheap top quality carbon racer for 144 pounds then well basically think again there's usually a reason why shoes are priced where they are and I don't think there's any exception here good point is that Nike offered these shoes to me for £144 admittedly that's the same price as everybody else and they came two days after the order them for the Nike UK website so it's not bad turnaround good point bad point depending on how you view it the insole is actually glued in which I presume is to save weight but for a shoe that's already very heavy that I think they must be desperate to try and save weight there and the, the heel cones are not a huge amount of padding there sort of quite nicely cushioned for a sort of trainer but certainly not a racing style fit in terms of the fit I thought it wasn't too bad initially when they put them on. I thought it was like a medium to narrow fit almost but having now put them on I had to cinch up the laces quite a lot so I think these shoes would definitely fit a wide range of foot shapes and I saw one of my friends Fabs to run on Instagram he's got quite wide feet getting into these shoes no problem at all you can already see I've got a bit of folding here after the first run the eyelets are quite nice they've got sort of like these eyelet holes so it's quite easy to just pull them in not a gusseted tongue but it's a quite a nicely sort of mildly cushioned one so you can wrap them up quite tightly and don't feel any strain across there the back looks a bit like the alpha fly or the pegasus 39 so nike have obviously designed this sort of shoe in that sort of sense uh, i would say that the drop doesn't really say on the website is about 10 mils feels like a normal drop outsole got a fairly sort of standard rubber at the front and the back there that little triangle there in the middle is sort of plastic and you can sort of see the zoom x underneath so it's interesting on the right shoe it says zoom x there but it doesn't seem to show it on the left shoe so <laughs> perhaps that's an indication that this isn't a full zoom x it seems to be like zoom x with a sort of a carrier frame to conceal it so i think they say it's like zoom x scrap so zoom x all the zoom x that comes back from people buying shoes sending them back because they don't like them and rather than get rid of them altogether they make new shoes like this one so in summary well, perhaps a bit of a disappointment to be honest i think people were expecting this to be some sort of super duper pegasus turbo alternative and a big rival to the Solcony speed 3 but nike seems to have played a, a sort of a favor to Solcony here making a pretty awful shoe and putting zoomix on the side and falling us into thinking it was something wonderful in fact if you read the page on the nike website they even say that this is a better performance shoe than the zoom fly 4 so they kind of admitted this line is pretty awful and well if this is the best they can do i would send you money Solcony's way until they find something better yeah so yeah a bit, a bit disappointing but i mean on the past side i suppose that they do feel for reasonably comfortable to wear i mean i think to be honest this is more of an everyday type trainer that you could use for a bit of speed like i did tonight if you wanted to someone said to me that sometimes you feel like shoes have depended on how good you're feeling and tonight was a nice warm evening i felt quite good considering the weight of these shoes got through the session fine no problems and yeah they're not bad as a sort of like if you want to like a nice sort of reasonably cushioned shoe underfoot they don't feel much like a zoom x they don't really bend at all I'm not sure if there's a carbon plate in here or not. They, the specs on the Nike website don't really say much other than the fact that they've admitted that the Zoom Fly 4 was a bit of a crap shoe and this is supposedly better. Well, if that, this is their idea of better, then I think they're trying to try a bit harder. And I would, if you're choosing this or the Sorokoni 
speed three, then I'll definitely go speed three. I mean, you get 100 grams less of shoe <laughs> than a Sauconi, and it uh, pretty much the same sort of cushioning, I would say. So I hope you enjoyed this look at the Zoom Fly 5. Is this the shoe that you were thinking of picking up, and perhaps I've changed your mind? If so, you can thank me for saving you money. If you want to get them anyway, well, they're quite a nice colour, aren't they? And I'm sure Nike will be very pleased to receive your money, but uh, don't be disappointed if you are expecting something that they don't think they are. Okay, so if you've had this interesting, like and subscribe on that, and see you next one. Bye! The problem with these creaky videos is you'll think of something else to say after you've filmed it. So the weight of these shoes at 388 grams on the left, 381 on the right, so say about 385, they're the equal heaviest Nike Road shoes I've got with the Invincible 1 and 2, which are both basically exactly the same. The only ones I've got which are slightly heavier, the Pegasus Trail 2 and 3 Gore-Tex editions, which are just over 400, but at least they, you expect those to be rather beefed up with an aggressive outsole and the Gore-Tex material, of course. I was thinking if you're a person with a sort of fairly average size foot for a man or woman, say like a size, I don't know, size eight for a man or size five or six for a woman, what Sue is, then you're probably racing shoes that's sort of under 200 grams and your pair is the same weight as one of my shoes here, which just puts it into perspective, doesn't it? And poor old me, I'm only about 73 kilograms. I'm not exactly a big guy. And I think if I stop eating chocolate and ice creams and stuff like that, then I could probably get down to somewhere around my sort of best ever racing weight of about 69 kilograms when I did 233 marathon. So yeah, that puts it into perspective of how heavy these shoes are for me. So one final thought on the stack of these shoes. I'm not quite sure the exact measurements because Nike don't seem to say, but they're certainly pretty high for modern day standards, certainly up towards 40 mils at the back, I would say, which kind of makes it so you don't really feel the road at all with it, with the shoe. And uh, I tend to sometimes in shoes sort of feel my toes through the front, which is one of the slight disadvantages with the shoe like the Speed, where I did feel after a while I could start to feel my toes through them, same with the Peg Turbos. I'm not feeling that yet. Admittedly, I've only done, this, done that one session, but I think that could be a plus point. So in a way, this may be more like a any trainer type setup really but I think the problem is they're sort of more marketed towards performance or at least you would sort of think that from the previous zoom fly range which are all meant to be marketed as sort of like a sort of a slightly cheaper version of their vapor fly next percents and four percents back in time brief interruption because the train's coming and the tongue is also A nice evening. <laughs>